All right, one, two, three, seven shots, 357 mag, a rapid fire. Hey guys, Triggermeister here. Today I'm uh, shooting a little video about uh, a 357 mag load in a 38 special case. So, probably like most of you, you have more 38 special brass than 357 mag brass. And so I tried to do uh, a little experiment based on a lot of research. So, the first off, let me just say that uh, this is something that I do on my own. If you decide to copy this, uh, you're 100% liable for anything that happens to you or your gun. So this is just strictly a video of uh, my experience with this test case. So that being said, long story short, did a bunch of research, found out that, of course, the 357 mag was developed from a uh, 38 special case loaded hot. And also found out that in the 60s, uh, there was a, I don't know if it was a fairly common process, but uh, there were definitely some guys that were reloading um, 357 mag or putting 357 mag loads in 38 special cases. So... This is what I did. So uh, first off, let me say uh, this is the these are the bullets that I used. I used the 158 grain extremes, and I picked them up from Great Lakes. I gotta give a shout out to Great Lakes because uh, they uh, always take care of me in terms of all my gun transfers, etc. And uh, then here's uh, the H110, which is uh, the powder that I use. And then I used the uh, CCI mags. So <clears throat> just for reference, here is the load written down. Again, 38 special case, 158 green extreme bullets, CCI mag primers, and I used 13.5 grain of H110. So this produced uh, just under 1,200 feet per second um of uh, velocity out of my uh Kunin, which uh extreme or at least uh the uh the guys at great lakes recommended that i don't exceed 1200 feet per second on the extreme bullets so something to do with the plating i guess there is uh different levels of plating some of them is, uh extreme has i think heavier plated bullets and then they have lighter plated bullets don't ask me the difference. I just uh, followed their recommendation. <clears throat> so, um, first off, just for a visual comparison, uh, there is a uh, 357 mag bullet fully loaded next to it. It's the uh, uh, 38 special case with the 158 grain extreme bullet. And then here's the uh, empty case for comparison. And there is a bullet. So you can see it, it still seats plenty deep into the 38 special case. The only thing that looks a little bit odd to some people is because the crimp groove is, of course, not or, uh, where the crimp happened. So uh, actually, <laughs> that's a really good thing because if you do this, it's a great visual indicator that you can see that, oh, there is something special about this round. And so to me, if I can see that crib groove sticking out that far, I know that I loaded this with a uh, 38 or with a 357 mag load. So no matter what's on the head, on the head stamp. And this is actually a fire piece of brass with that load that I just uh, shared with you. So, and you can see, you know, the primer is flattened, but that you would expect that out of, uh, from a 357 mag as well. But there are really no signs that worry me in terms of, uh, 
you know too much uh, case pressure etc so it you know this is a this is a good load kind of medium of the road but it's not on the high end and it's not necessarily on the low end so here let me uh, share the results with you so first let's uh, start over here we have uh, the 686 Smith & Wesson and uh, the first time around I shot it and I think unfortunately it's mostly me because I can't get a good grip on a revolver and I've never really shot uh, wheel guns a whole lot so I'm sure uh, Jerry Mikulik could probably do better than me but uh, this is what I kind of put together the first time around I wasn't really satisfied with it so uh, I adjusted the sights a little bit and then this is what I got the uh, second time around so at least they're all touching and uh, these are six shot strings so then uh, this is the group that I put together with the GP100 from Ruger uh, awesome gun but uh, I do have to adjust the sights on this thing a little bit or a lot bit so and I did not have a chance to do that I didn't make enough ammo up to do this one as well so but <clears throat> here is the uh, I think the most impressive group because six shots with the Kunin literally they're all on top of each other except for one flyer so I gotta say, you know, from a strictly uh, a load perspective, it it barks, <laughs> it, it shoots really well uh, in terms of the Kunin, and again, you know, with the wheel guns, I am not a hundred percent positive if uh, if that's uh, me or if it's the gun or if it's the load, so. Uh, I definitely like to put them all on top of each other with the with the wheel guns. Oh, and I should mention that this was at seven yards, so this was by far not uh, 25 yarder. This is <laughs> the, nothing a bullseye shooter would be very proud of. So, if you have any thoughts on this load, please comment below. Uh, to close this video out, uh, stay tuned for some uh, shots from the range. Alright, first up is the 686. We're going to fire six shots and off the rest. And I have uh, three little black dots, so seven yards down range. So we're not going to make this a long distance shoot. Just uh, hopefully we'll uh, get a, ni a nice grouping close up. Next up is the GP100. And last but not least, the Kunin 357 Classic. lineup the 686 the GP 100 and the Kunin 357 hey guys just to give the 686 uh, another shot <laughs> I uh, put six rounds down range on a different target so um, and I did adjust the sights a little bit so that's a much better grouping than uh, the one that we had over here, of course. So, which this one, I guess, wasn't too bad. But, uh, long story short, I just wanted to uh, make sure that I shared with you guys that the 686 is a great shooter. 